WP eCommerce can be installed like any other WordPress plugin. It can be installed using your FTP program to download it to your WordPress site's plugin folder. It can be uploaded from your local computer and installed in a zip format from the Install Plugins upload screen. Or you can use the plugin Add New Subhandle. After it is downloaded, you can activate the plugin by clicking on the Activate link. After you install and activate the WP eCommerce plugin, it will install four new modules on the dashboard screen, two new subpanels in the dashboard panel for store sales and store upgrades, a new panel on the admin menu titled Products, a new subpanel link under the settings panel titled Store, and several widgets located under the Appearance Widgets subpanel. The four new modules on the dashboard screen are the Get Shop News panel, where you can find current articles about WP eCommerce. The Sales Summary panel will have current sales and income activity. The Sales by Quarter for getting sales information for any quarter you enter in the field and the sales by month that list the sales for the last four months by product. You can also get more details in current sales by clicking on the store sales in the dashboard admin menu. These are all tools for keeping informed about sales. If you just installed WP eCommerce, then some of these panels will not contain much information. The store upgrades subpanel has a list of all the available upgrades that can be made to the WP eCommerce plugin. This is the screen that has the form to enter the API key once you purchase any of these upgrades. The store subpanel located under the settings panel is where you'll be doing most of the initial setup for the store and where you make most of the changes that affect the appearance of your store. It is in this subpanel that you set the tax and currency settings, how you present your store to the customer, how you communicate with the customer after the sale, how you set up your shipping options and shipping rates, what payments you will accept, and your checkout options for a sale. This subpanel also has an import option for downloading products from a CVS file and a marketing section for store promotions. Initially, you'll spend most of your setup time in the store subpanel, and you have that set, you will spend most of your time in the product subpanel. The Products panel has six subpanels. It is in this subpanel where you will add and edit your products for the store, manage the product tags and categories, and issue coupons for the store. And the widgets installed are for displaying the shopping cart and various ways to display your products. Once you get the WP eCommerce plugin activated, you have an operational shopping cart. If you add a product, you'll be able to add it to the shopping cart and actually complete the checkout. But until you've made a few decisions and activated a few buttons, the plugin will not be very functional. There are a few things that you should give some thought to before adding products and completing the store setup. These things will make the process go smoother and faster with less retracing and changing. The first is the permalink structure of your site. Next are the shipping options then tax tables, the payment gateway, categories for your store, and to protect any changes you make to your store files from automatic upgrades. A permalink is the permanent URL or link to a site entry. Permalinks are what search engines use to help determine the relevancy of the site for a search. You want the permalinks to speak to the search engines and to a visitor so they understand what you have. Setting this now will prevent any broken links later. Next are the shipping options. Answering some basic questions about shipping 
will help the process when filling out the shipping options panel. First, are you going to ship a product? If you're selling digital downloads, then you'll only need to check the Use Shipping option to know. If you're shipping a product, then the basic WPE Commerce configuration supports three internal shipping modules, weight rate, flat rate, and a table rate, and three external shipping modules, USPS, UPS, and Australian Post, and even a fulfillment service called Shipwire. Setting up the tax tables can get complicated. You may only need to collect taxes for the state where your store is physically located. Some states may require you to collect taxes for the product and for shipping. Check your state and local tax office for details. WPE Commerce has tax tables for setting up this process. Choosing a payment gateway. If you are processing your own payments, then you may need a merchant account. That usually takes some time to secure, so this is a process you want to start as soon as possible. There may very well be some site requirements, like a posted return policy, or a posted shipping policy, for instance, or they may even require a security certificate to show your site is secure. If you're using a service where you link to the payment process, such as PayPal, then you may not need a separate merchant account. You'll want to look at your options and the fees associated with the processing. Planning your categories will save you time and lost effort as you add your products. Having a good idea of the structure of these categories will also help the store run smoother and more efficient and your site will look cleaner and well organized. One of the first things you should do is to protect your WPE Commerce template files from automatic upgrades. You'll be putting time and energy into your store site and you don't want any work erased with a store upgrade. To benefit from the upgrades and to protect your data, you will need to move some of the WPE Commerce theme template files to a separate location. The WPE Commerce theme is not the same as a WordPress theme. The WPE Commerce themes are the template files for the displays of the products, the forms, and the shopping cart for the store. WPE Commerce has an advanced theme setting where you can copy the store template files to your active WordPress themes folder. If you make any changes to these templates and they're not moved, then where there's a store upgrade, they will be overwritten and you will lose any changes made to these template files. By moving the template files to your active WordPress themes folder, you can edit the template files found there and then any upgrade will not overwrite these files and all your changes will remain. If you change the active WordPress theme, then these files will need to be moved from the current active theme to the new active theme folder. These things are not written in stone and will change as the store grows, but giving serious thought to these beforehand makes the process easier and a lot less frustrating.